I'm going to love you forever, forever and ever. Amen. As long as old men sit and talk about the weather, as long as old women sit and talk about old men. If you wonder how long I'll be faithful, well, just listen to how this song ends. I'm going to love you forever and ever, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to love you forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever. Amen. Those are some of the lyrics from Forever and Ever, Amen, by Randy Travis, and we borrow the title of that song for our sermon on this Mother's Day. Hi, I'm Greg Albrecht. A warm welcome to one and all, wherever you may be, to this audio teaching of CWR, Christianity Without the Religion. And we know from the responses we have and from the hits on our website and the emails and letters and the communication we have and the response that you are around this world. And I can't name all the places, but You know, we could start with uh, Northern Ireland and Scotland and all of the UK. We could start with many of the countries and continue with many of the countries in Europe. We could think about uh, some of the Gulf states in the Middle East where many servicemen and women listen to us on the internet. We could talk about those listeners we have in India, in Singapore, in Australia, in New Zealand, in China, in Japan, and so many places of course, also here in North America, United States and Canada, also in Mexico and South America. Hello and welcome to all of you. And forgive me if I've not mentioned your particular geographical area, and I may not have because you're new. And if you are new, a extremely special welcome. If we had an electronic cup of coffee to give you, we'd do that. But please pull up a chair and stay with us for our message today. As we honor mothers today and this week, we're going to talk about how the parental love of a mother or of a father can teach us about the love of God. We're going to talk about how each of us who are blessed to be parents have many regrets about the love that we didn't give. And that we have those regrets because as hard as we try to unconditionally love others, only God is capable of perfect, unending, no questions asked, no strings attached, unconditional love. So stay with us now as we discuss forever and ever, amen, let's join together in prayer. Our Father in heaven, today and this week, Mother's Day and the week of Mother's Day, we are thankful for mothers. We focus on them and on motherhood and on the unique and special kind of love that mothers have. And as we give thanks and honor mothers, we remember your love for us. Surely no human being has ever loved perfectly, but you have and you do eternally. Therefore, we thank you for your love, the greatest and most profound power in this universe. We pray for your teaching and your inspiration as we discuss forever and ever. Amen. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our keynote passage in our message is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Some time ago, some years ago, I gave a sermon about the, some of the most uh, effective, inspirational, helpful, and favorite passages I have in the Bible. And to be honest, I can't remember if this was one of them, but if I made the list today, this certainly would make that list. I mention it, I think of it, I refer to it, I study it often. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. A prayer of Paul, and in my Bible it says, for the Ephesians. But of course, this is a prayer for all children of God, of all times, all eras, all 
nations, all nationalities, all color, all, all sizes, all stripes, all languages, all people groups, it's a prayer for you and me. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Paul prays that we would know four dimensions, the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of God's love. And of course, Paul is talking about the limitless boundaries of God's love, rather than speaking exactly, precisely, and of a, a geographical or, or a mathematical dimensions, he's speaking metaphorically. The perfection and unconditional nature of God's love and the power, the limitless power of God's love. Paul prays that Christ will live, he will dwell, he will reside in our hearts, not merely visiting our hearts. For Jesus moves in, remains, and abides in our hearts. By God's grace, the love he expresses to us and that he gives us is forever and ever. God's love is no one-night stand love. He doesn't just hook up with us because he likes the looks of us in the haze of a alcohol stupor. I'm using now only the physical metaphor. I don't mean to speak blasphemous of God, blasphemously of God. But God loves us in the morning and at night, when we're at our worst and when we're at our best, when we're all dulled up with our Sunday go to meeting clothes on, and we've just come in from the barnyard reeking of the barnyard. God's love is forever and ever. The love of God lived in us, our hearts, by our risen Lord, means we're not alone. We don't live this life alone, and we're not going to die alone. This is the power of God's love that resides within us, wherein Jesus makes his home with us and in us. This is the love that is with us as we wait by the phone to hear the call from the doctor's office or the hospital with the results of the most recent test we had we had done. This is the love of God that's living within us when that sleeping pill wears off and we wake up at three o'clock in the morning with night sweats, terrified because we're in the midst of a desperate time of our life. This is the love of God personified in Jesus who will never leave us, even in the midst of a tragedy, an accident, or an act of violence that devastates us. This is the love of God that sits with us, stays with us, holds our hand, sings to us when a loved one dies. Paul prays that we are rooted and established in love. God's love is our ground floor. It's our foundation. It's our core. It's our center. Everything else that we can think of that is our spiritual house springs out of and is held together by the foundation of God's love in which we are rooted and established. And this love that Paul prays for, this love of God, enables us to live with ourselves, because sometimes that's one of the hardest things to do ever, to live with yourself 
when otherwise guilt and shame might otherwise overwhelm us. Speaking of guilt and shame, and going back to parenting and mothering in particular, those of us who are parents, we have our regrets. We can look back to many times when we could have been better parents. And children, of course, have great memories in 2020 hindsight. Children will often remind us of our failings, not necessarily in a negative way, although that can happen as well when they have their issues, their grudges that they have to deal with. And for that matter, perhaps we, for we indeed are also children no matter what our age, even if our parents are no longer alive. There were times when they were, when we've taken the time to remind them of their own shortcomings. On the one hand, the older we get and the more mature that we become and the more we grow in Christ, if we are a parent, every time the spotlight is placed on mothers, for instance, on Mother's Day or on fathers on Father's Day coming up in the month of June, we have a deeper sense of our own inadequacy. And I think that's fair. I think that's rightly so. That's part of the lessons to be learned on a Mother's Day or Father's Day. Every human is deeply and fatally flawed. If we look back on our own parenting, yes, it's fairly easy to look and find mistakes. Don't have to look too long. Don't have to look too hard. And if we wallow around in our mistakes, in our shortcomings, we can be filled with shame and guilt and regret. For the many times we failed, the many times we were far from the parent that we could have been, and even easier in some ways as adult children, we can look back on our own parents and realize their many shortcomings. We see their failures with such amazing, crystal clear vision. Hopefully, as adult children, we then take the next step in the thinking process, the next spiritual step which we take in humility. And if we've been blessed with children of our own, we realize then that our own children will one day have the same perfect 2020 hindsight, looking back and identifying many of the mistakes we have made. Speaking more specifically of mothers, there's such an ideal picture presented in the media and entertainment today of mothers who can do it all, they have a full-time career, they're full-time mothers. And of course, that's already an impossible expectation because you can't be full-time at one or both. There must be one or the other that you are full-time at. But images and ideals and expectations continue as mothers who work in the home, or mothers who work out of the home, mothers who are always there for the children who help with their homework, who do all the shopping, who do all the cooking, who do all the cleaning, who drive in the carpools, who attend all of their children's activities at school and in organized sports. The image of this perfect mother can lead mothers to enormous shame and guilt because no one can be that kind of perfect mother. But moms, look at it another way, our imperfections as parents or as spouses or as children, or as adult children, or as friends, bring us to our knees and they enable us to see with more clarity, with the spiritual vision given by God, the perfect love of God, the pain, the shame, the guilt, and regret of our own imperfections could overwhelm and devastate us if we were not to remove that spotlight from our own imperfections and we are able to do that because of the cross of Christ. We're able to remove the spotlight from our own imperfections because of the cross of Christ and the grace of God. And we're able to take away the focus on our imperfections as parents or as husbands or as wives or as children and train that spotlight. In fact, we're invited to, in fact, we're advised to, in fact, we're taught and admonished to on our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we place the spotlight on the love of our Heavenly Father, then we know that here we find a love that is forever and ever. Amen. 
Here we find a love that is not conditional on our performance or anyone's performance. We know that He covers all of our shortcomings and our imperfections by His grace. We know that the love of God transcends all human logic and cognitive abilities to completely capture it and understand it and and put it inside the covers of a book. And for that, we're thankful, because God's love is outside of our capacity to control it or to understand it in in its entirety. God's love is eternal. It defies all human boundaries and limitations. Again, from some of the lyrics from the song Forever and Ever Amen, which of course is a song about the love of a man and a woman, we can hear our Heavenly Father singing to us of His never-ending, absolutely perfect commitment and love. Imagine our Heavenly Father singing these words, If you wonder how long I'll be faithful, well, just listen to how this song ends. I'm going to love you forever and ever, forever and ever. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, to you and me, I'm going to love you forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever. Amen. And as we continue to think about this incredible love of God, it's dimensions, as Paul points out, metaphorically, the breadth, the length, the height, the depth. Let me share the lyrics of another song with you. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. This song is from Love You Forever, a book by Robert Munch, one of the best-selling children's books of all time. They're the lyrics of a song sung by a mother to her son. Love You Forever is a storybook. It's a song that a mother originally sings to her infant son. And that song then is repeated as the young man grows up and eventually moves away from home and as he gets married and has a family of his own. The story told in Love You Forever, this children's book, and by the lyrics of this song is about the cycle of life and the love and emotions that go along with it. The story is about parenting little children as parents cradle infants in their arms and sing to them. The story told by Robert Munch in Love You Forever is about children growing up and the exasperations and frustrations parents experience as young people develop their own personalities and begin to make their own decisions. And the story is about the difficulty a parent, specifically in this song, a mother, has in continuing to always and forever love their adult child, even when they must let go of them so that they might live their own lives. The story in Love You Forever is about adult children who become parents and love, and then, and sometimes only then, when they have children of their own, they begin to fathom the incredible love their parents, and in particular in this song and this book, their mother had for them. And as Love You Forever recounts the stages and cycles of life, it's not only about birth and little children, it's about death. For toward the conclusion of this book, Love You Forever, the story implies the death of the mother But still in the face of death and sorrow, the cycle of love continues for the mother's adult son. Now a parent pours out his love into the life of his children. And now with his mother gone, the son sings the same song to his infant daughter as he cradles her in his arms. I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. The author Robert Munch of Love You Forever says that he wrote the book and the lyrics of this song after he and his wife had two stillborn babies. After two babies were born dead, he wrote them a song that he couldn't even sing at first because every time he tried, he cried. And then after he wrote the song, he wrote a story around the song, and that's the story contained in the book, Love You Forever. Think back with me to another story of a mother and a son. In this case, the son died first. 
The normal role of the parent dying first and being mourned by a child is reversed in this story of the mother and son. And the love in this story is also reversed, for as great as the love of this mother was for her son, this son loved her in a far greater way. The greatest and most powerful and enduring love in this story we're going to recall was evidenced by the son, and as you probably already have picked up, the son is with a capital S. In fact, his death was all about his love. For the Son of God died on a cross as the ultimate demonstration and revelation of the love of God. If you like, close your eyes and imagine this scene, which we have no biblical reason to believe actually happened, but it could well have happened. The soldiers had taken down the cross and removed the body of Jesus from it, and as brutal as they had been in crucifying Jesus, they stood back then and allowed his mother Mary to touch him, to hug him, and kiss him. Imagine Mary pressing the body of Jesus close to her own and holding his head in the crook of one of her arms, crying softly as she sang, I'll love you forever. I'll like you for always. As long as I'm living, my baby, you'll be. We conclude our message today as we think of the love of God the love of parents, as we honor mothers wherever they may be, and for the tremendous love that they have given to each of us. We conclude our message with God's promises of his everlasting, forever, unchanging, no boundaries love, imagining our heavenly parent singing these lyrics from the Randy Travis song, Forever and Ever, Amen. If you wonder how long I'll be faithful, well, just listen to how this song ends. I'm going to love you forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to love you forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, for your matchless, your supreme, your boundaryless love, we are astonished. We are amazed at your grace. We are thankful for the human love that has been shown to us, specifically this day, through our mothers. And we know that all love ultimately comes from you, and truly godly love is the kind of love that you give to each of us as your children. We are thankful we are able to pass that love on in the various and sundry relationships that we have. And we ask for your help as we continue doing so when we give you all thanks in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank all of you for being with us around the world. We mentioned uh, a number of places where you all live, and we think of you and pray for you, and we appreciate your prayers, by the way, and your support of this ongoing work of Christianity without the religion. If you're not familiar, you need to check out our website at www.ptm.org. We've got many, many resources, so check us out there. Next week, join us again. Our message is from Romans chapter 7, verses 18 through 19. It's titled, Grace is Senseless, Irrational, and Absurd. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Please join us on our website, www.ptm.org, for more spiritual nourishment that we provide through the many ministries and resources here at Plain Truth Ministries.